<laughs> We've learned a lot about shark behavior and shark physiology, and some species are very resilient. They're actually really hardy, and I think that's the key to their historic success. Um, others aren't, and, and those are the ones we have to be more careful about. So the problem is until we learn about them, we can't make good decisions on how to best protect them. And that's one of the things we focus on here at the Shark Lab. How can we learn more to help conserve and protect things, but also keep people safe? One of our new forms of technology we're using are, is like a Fitbit for sharks. It's basically a little backpack that clamps on the shark's dorsal fin, and it measures every motion the shark makes. It measures the water temperature, the depth, and the compass heading. And then we have a little transmitter on there so we can actually follow the shark around and know exactly where it is. There she goes. And it even has a video logger so we can see what the shark sees. At a pre-described time, this thing pops off, floats the surface, we can pick it up, download all that information and figure out what was that shark doing. We've learned a lot about baby white sharks over the last 10 years. One of the most interesting one is that they migrate. They're only here during the summer and then in the winter they migrate all the way down to Baja. However, during El Nino's they don't migrate and that becomes really important because the public suddenly sees more sharks the following spring and it's not that the population's exploded, it's just that El Nino changed their behavior. Um, basically the bottom line is Go out, enjoy the ocean, and remember the sharks are there. Be smart about how you use the ocean, but I really don't think you need to worry about them as much as, say, driving down the 405 to go to the beach. Far more dangerous adventure than going out in the surf.